Napoleon Bonaparte is one of the greatest military leaders in world history. Under his command, France was able to steamroll its way through most of Europe, taking territory and setting up puppet states to spread its influence. Regardless of whether you believe Napoleon was a hero or a tyrant, it must be admitted that he forever changed the course of history, for better or worse. In today's video, we'll examine the life of Napoleon Bonaparte, the effects his reign had on Europe, and the political and historical consequences that he had on our world today. Proceeding his rise to power, Napoleon was an ambitious man who sought military glory. He had graduated from a French military academy in 1785 and served as a second lieutenant in an artillery regiment. In 1789, the French Revolution began and the French monarchy was overthrown and replaced with the French Republic. A group of revolutionary radicals known as the Jacobins took control of the new French Republic and Napoleon began to pursue ties with this group to advance his military aspirations. It was because of these ties that Napoleon was then able to achieve the rank of Brigadier General. Although, after the leader of the Jacobin Club, Maximilien Robespierre, was guillotined, Napoleon was briefly forced into house arrest due to his ties with the group. Once he returned to his military duties, Napoleon was sent to suppress a royalist rebellion in Paris, which would result in his promotion to the rank of Major General. During the War of the First Coalition in 1793, Napoleon led a force in northern Italy that was much smaller than his enemies. But despite this disadvantage, Napoleon used strategies of dividing up his armies and flanking his enemy to threaten their rear to take on large forces to gain major victories. The war would later end in 1797 after France and Austria agreed to peace in the Treaty of Campo Formio which granted several pieces of territory to France. Despite this treaty, France would go to war again in 1798 with Britain Russia and Austria in the War of the Second Coalition. During that same year, Napoleon was sent to British-controlled Egypt in an attempt to disrupt British trade routes to India. Although, his armies would suffer staggering defeats to the British, which would cause him to travel back to France, abandoning his army in the process. Then, in 1799, Napoleon would lead a military coup to overthrow the chaotic French government and place him as the leading political figure of France. Then, under Napoleon's command, the French armies were able to score several victories and force the Second Coalition to sue for peace in 1802, thus cementing his power over France. Now that France was at peace, Napoleon was able to focus on domestic reforms that he felt were important to the future of France. Such reforms included education, banking, and improving ties with the Catholic Church. However, none of these were as significant as Napoleon's Napoleonic Code. This code would provide a basis of laws that would govern and form the structure of the French government that still lasts today. While it was revolutionary for the time, it's important to note that this code did in fact have sexist laws as it gave men in France authority over their wives. Although, this wasn't the only infamous thing that Napoleon would commit during his reign. In 1804, Napoleon would declare himself to be First Council for Life and would crown himself during a ceremony at the famous Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. It would be from then on that Napoleon would undertake the title of Emperor of France. But while his enemies inside of France were few, Napoleon still faced foreign threats all over Europe due to the revolutionary ideals that were present in France. This would then lead to the War of the Third Coalition in 1803 with Britain, the Holy Roman Empire, Sweden, and Russia all declaring war on France. But despite all the odds against him, Napoleon and his military leaders were able to thwart the attempts of the coalition to bring back a monarchy to France. After gaining new territory, France would set up loyalist puppet states all around Europe as a means for spreading its influence. It would be through these puppet states that new ideas would spread but one that would be especially important to the future of Europe would be nationalism. From 1806 to 1809, two more coalition wars would happen. However, these both would be short-lived as Napoleon's armies would claim decisive victory in both wars. But despite these military successes, Napoleon's luck would soon begin to run out. Shortly after the War of the Fifth Coalition had ended, Napoleon began to set up the Continental System, 
as a means of economically isolating Britain from all European trade. This system would be forced upon almost all of Europe as they were forced to submit to the will of France. But this would change in 1810 when Russia withdrew from the system, thus resulting in Napoleon mobilizing an army of 600,000 men to take Russia by force. The French army initially marched into Russia with little resistance, but trouble soon arose once the army began to run out of supplies due to the Russian forces purposely burning food and ammunition to ensure the French wouldn't resupply. But despite this, Napoleon pushed to keep advancing into Russia as he believed if he took Moscow, the Russians would surrender. However, once they did reach Moscow, the French army found it in flames and soon realized the harsh Russian winter was approaching. With the possibility of complete destruction of his armies in front of him, Napoleon ordered a dangerous retreat that saw his army under constant harassment by the Russian forces. By the time they had fully exited Russia, Napoleon's army had lost over 500,000 men. With the French completely exposed to Europe, the coalition reformed to try to defeat Napoleon once again. Napoleon would try to make one last stand at the Battle of Leipzig, but that would result in a critical victory for the coalition. France would then surrender to the coalition in March of 1814, and Napoleon would be forced into exile on the island of Elba and replaced with a French monarch. A year later, Napoleon would escape from exile and attempt to reassemble his forces to reclaim France's lost territory. Then, at the Battle of Waterloo, Napoleon's armies would be totally crushed under the pressure of the Prussian and British armies. Once France surrendered in October of 1815, Napoleon was once again forced into exile this time on the remote island of St. Helens, where he would never escape and would spend the rest of his life. While Napoleon's empire didn't last more than a couple decades, his legacy has been forever ingrained into history. Aside from the massive wars his reign brought, Napoleon forever changed the course of history, for better or worse. His Napoleonic code shaped the future of the French and European legal system, and his conquest of Europe led to the spread of nationalism. A couple decades after his reign, many European nations began to adopt nationalist policies that would prioritize expanding their borders and spheres of influence across all continents. It would be this ambition of expansion that would lead to European colonization of Africa and Asia. These colonies would then lead to tensions among European nations and create alliances that would ultimately culminate in World War I. Due to the harsh conditions of the Treaty of Versailles placed upon Germany, World War II would then break out which would ultimately create our modern political climate. So this raises the point, if Napoleon hadn't come to power, then we most likely would be living in a very different world today.